Welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. After my last video on foam rolling, I received quite the criticism regarding the accuracy of my video. So that's why I decided to create a series that dives deeper into foam rolling and addresses all the topics and questions you guys have raised. I'll also be updating these animations as new information becomes available, making this a somewhat ongoing, evolving process. Having said that, Let's dive into the first topic. It's going to be muscle tension. A key point of critique was that foam rolling doesn't actually release muscle tension. So I went back and did some more research and here's what I found out. Every muscle has a certain level of tightness, known as muscle tone, which is controlled by signals from the brain and regulated through the nervous system. Muscle tone is a low-level tension maintained even at rest, stabilizing posture and alignment while keeping the body ready to respond to different forces, all without creating a visible flex or increase your muscle size. For example, when you flex your biceps, your brain sends a strong signal to fully contract the muscle, making it visibly harder and larger. A strong contraction, like a biceps flex, uses a lot of energy. So evolution has optimized muscle tone to keep muscles subtly active without constant full contractions. This allows us to stay ready for movement while also conserving energy. Muscle tone is our natural low-level readiness, but it can increase overall in response to stress, past injuries or repetitive movements. So when this happens, certain muscles may hold more tension than needed, and this leads to a persistent feeling of tightness in some areas, even when you stretch regularly. Now here's where foam rolling comes into play. When you press a foam roller into a muscle, several types of sensors respond to the pressure and movement of the roller. The first of these sensors are muscle spindles. Here's a simplified model of a muscle spindle. Well, actually, it's three of them. I just want you to be aware there are many of them in your muscles. Muscle spindles are embedded within muscle fibers and detect changes in muscle length. As you roll over the muscle, let's say along your back, the gentle stretch activates these spindles, allowing them to monitor how much and how quickly the muscle is lengthening. This little yellow guy represents a Pacinian corpuscle. These sensors are located deeper within the skin and connective tissue, and they are highly sensitive to vibrations and rapid changes in pressure. When they detect a steady, consistent pressure from a foam roller, they send feedback to the nervous system, signaling the brain that the pressure is safe, controlled, and non-threatening. And finally, here we have Golgi tendon organs, well, at least a cartoon version of them. Anyway, Golgi tendon organs are located right at the junction between muscle and tendon, and they work like built-in tension monitors. So when the muscle experiences an increase in tension, like from the steady pressure of a foam roller, these sensors send a signal to the brain, telling it to slightly reduce muscle activation. So in essence, these three sensors work together to send signals to the brain and letting it know that the foam roller's pressure is safe. The brain then responds by allowing the muscle to relax temporarily. That's what gives you that feeling of release. But remember, it's just a short-term effect. The muscle itself hasn't actually changed its internal structure. This relaxation explains why foam rolling can make you feel more flexible or less sore. An interesting study, which you will find in the description, indicates that rolling before exercise can improve mobility, and rolling afterwards can aid recovery. Now, foam rolling doesn't work the same for everyone. The pressure you use, how long you roll, and the type of roller can all make a difference. I'd say foam rolling is best understood as a tool for loosening up and relieving soreness, rather than a long-term fix. If you want to get the best results, try using slow, steady pressure to tap into this natural relaxation response without applying too much force. I think this is everything I have right now. Oh, one more thing. I want to add that I really, really welcome all viewpoints in this discussion. And if you have studies to share, I'd love to see them. After all, that's one way we can explore and verify our beliefs together. Personal experience is also really valuable, whether you're a manual therapist, athlete, or trainer. Real-world insights often reveal things that studies might miss, especially when science can be influenced by sponsorships or other biases.
Anatomy is a constantly evolving field, and we as practitioners, trainers, and athletes, it's essential for us to keep an open mind. Because what we believe to be true today could be challenged tomorrow. So I welcome both science and personal experience. Let's keep challenging our ideas, learn from each other, and build a well-rounded understanding of anatomy every day. Have a good one.